All right, so you are welcome back to the show here on Prago 99.9. Yao Mautofianu in the stand. I have two amazing people here. Um, I have a lady and a gentleman. And the gentleman is Tadi Bayes, Tadi Born. He is an up-and-coming poet. And he calls himself Ike Boat the Poet. And then I have a lady. I just don't know how to describe you, honestly. I don't know. Um, are you Superwoman? Yeah, why not? You're, oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I love that. You know, because... because um, I don't even know one word cannot describe you. Um multifaceted, would that do? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Or maybe regal. Because I love the way you're sitting right now. You know, like an African <laughs> princess of sorts. It's amazing. But your name, um, I know you bear two names. Because I was reading your bio. Um you travel to Ghana and mm. you wanted to come to Ghana to be part of the Calabash Hub. Yes, I came with the Calabash Hub. But it's initially group, yeah. when you were traveling you bought you a ticket with a different name yeah yeah <laughs> so, so which name are we working with is it Cezanne Poetess that's Cezanne Poetess yes. all right we're not going to mention the other one all right you're going to keep that one a secret but you are an amazing woman you do a whole lot a whole lot you are most importantly as the title goes you are Cezanne Poetess you are a poet mm -hmm. and then you are a painter Yes, I art, do uh, yeah. art. All right, yeah, yeah you do art. Yes. And and then you record your recitals. Mm -hmm. Do you sing? I do some singing on with my poetry, yes. You do some singing as well? With the poetry, yes. <laughs> I don't class myself as a singer, but I, I'm a spoken word artist, but I do include singing and, and in then, with my poetry. And, and then you are, you are an itinerant world, world traveller? Just beginning my travels. You're beginning yeah. your travels. All right. So let's talk about the most important thing. Let's, let's talk about poetry. Mm. You know, I'm not going to ask you the question that everybody asks. Like, why did you get into poetry and you know, all that? What is the satisfaction you get from poetry? Well, it helps me to express myself. Okay. Like, the, the things that I may not say verbally. Okay. You know, I mean, I actually started off writing Christian poetry. Ooh. Yeah. That was my very first, my very first poems were Christian poems. Okay. And, um... I was just writing down things God was saying to me and okay. I put them on my walls and I never even thought of them as poems. But mm. when I put them on my walls to remind myself... They were prophecies, God, were they not? That's right. Yeah. Prophetic poems. Mm -hmm. And people would read them and want copies, you know. And then I, ended, I started off selling them as posters, mm -hmm. you know. And that was, yeah, my very first poems that I wrote. And then I started putting them to music. Okay. You know, so I'm actually on my second CD now. Okay. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> and um, what kind of mindset you need to have? Is there a special place you need to be? Maybe you have a dark room in your house. You turn off the lights and then you put on the incense and there is um, Kenny G in the background. You can do that. You can do all of that. Uh -huh. But um, I do find that just, yeah, sitting in the silence does help. Okay. If you're you're seeking to get information from elsewhere all you right know, a lot of my poems were inspired okay rather than me constructing them mm -hmm. or even channeled is another word i use okay. sometimes i don't even know where the words are Come coming from, from. i'm yeah. just writing i'm just more feels more like i'm taking dictation okay what yeah. kind of what kind of poetry do you do i know there is classic there is you know rhyming and all of that you know school us a bit what what is your style yeah, oh, it's my own style because I, I wasn't taught how to write poetry. You were not? No. You didn't study it at school? No. Oh, okay. No. And if, if you put, you're you're putting me. the rest of us who actually studied it to shame. <laughs> you are. I feel miserable right now because I don't, have, I don't even have a pamphlet. <laughs> well, I've had people that actually have studied it tell me how my poems don't rhyme or they're not in the proper... You know, structure. yeah, nit nitpickers, you and know, I'm people like people like I, that. Yeah, I kind of think outside of the box. Anyway. Thank you. So. Yeah, we've had enough of such people in the world, you know, <laughs> they're boring, you know. So, you don't have a style, I have my own style, style. you've created yeah, your own um, style. I wouldn't say I write in haikus or any particular you know, okay. poetry style. So, when it rhymes, it rhymes, when, when it, it rhymes, doesn't, it rhymes, and when, when it, it doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> the most important thing is what the there's meaning is. There's a message, there's a message yes. in there. So, if I read your, read your poetry or I listen to it, what kind of message am I going to get? It depends on which one you're listening to, but it's the basic, the basis of all my poems, mm -hmm. I would say, is love, you know, unconditional love. Oh, okay. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about... Um, just, I, you know, just, you know, just, the physical, you know... Not, yeah, not mm -hmm. that type of love. I'm mm -hmm. just talking about 
the, the force of love. Okay. Yeah. So, so <laughs> that's a beautiful thing about poets. You know, you are thinking something physical or mm. earthly, and they are thinking something ethereal. You know, something you <laughs> can't put your hands on. I got a feeling like when people, you people are wa- walking down the street, you see how the lines connect. You know, mm. like the matrix. Yeah. You know how the lines connect. Like you guys have some sort of inside connection, right? What was the first time you I did? I do your... think there is. There is. Mm-hmm. If you're if you're writing that type of poetry, that is, you're inspired. Okay. Like I know people that write poems based on how they were taught to write it. And exactly. I've heard people mm-hmm. recite poems like that, and mm-hmm. I just think there's some of them to me just. Roses are red, violets are blue. The life? You hit you know? me in the face, <laughs> and so I hit you. <laughs> you know, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the best type of poems that I write, I'm not, mm-hmm. I can only speak for myself, are the ones that are inspired. You know, okay. that I hear something, you okay. know, and that is from just, you know, a lot of my poems, especially the one on the CD that okay. I just gave you, yeah. Seeds of Love, mm-hmm. are the ones that were inspired okay. where I spent a lot of time in meditation okay. and just learning to listen. Okay. You know, yeah, there's, there's some, there's, to me, there's another world out there that okay. you can tune into okay. if you learn to go within. All right. You know, so a lot of it is from your subconscious or tapping into this universal mind. But mm-hmm. there's more to this life than um, what we are led to believe. Believe that there is. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there are more dimensions, more yes. layers, you know. Yeah. Amazing. Um, when was the first time you, you know, I know you've written, you said you had prophecies you wrote them and you pasted them on walls and you shared them with friends um, what was yeah. the first time you performed before um, let's say a crowd or mm, a club or something i remember that time and i remember <laughs> it wasn't actually a poem it was a song my son, my brother wrote okay it was called um, holding on hold on to your dreams basically that was the basis of the poem okay and i was so scared so nervous you mm-hmm. know in front of the crowd you know that i <laughs> Me, I said I'm never doing that again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that, was like, about, that was about twenty pub, something years pub, ago. Public speaking is scary. Yeah. But then when you have to make it, you know, artistic, you have to yeah. perform. It's even scarier. Yeah. But then the minute you start performing it, you know, you realize that the butterflies are leaving your belly and you're free to do. It. It's awesome. Well, you still you still get them, but it's just for now. I've just now I can control it now. Exactly. You know? like, it's like I told a friend some time ago. If you don't feel the butterflies yeah. and it means you're too overconfident and you yeah. just might mess up. Yeah. But so long as you have a little yeah. bit, then you, you always are... will feel that. Most and... actors say that as well or mm-hmm. performers will say that okay. they always feel it, but you just have to learn how to control it. And it was just by pushing myself, pushing myself to keep doing it. I'd be, I remember my first performance, mm-hmm. I had the paper and it was like... <laughs> and your, your hands were shaking. <laughs> Amazing. All right. So when was the first time um, you ever heard of Ghana and your decision to come here? Hmm... I think it was, well, I don't remember the first time I heard about Ghana, mm-hmm. but um, through the process of writing my novel, okay. I was doing studying history, black history, okay. and I just had an a urge to mm-hmm. come to Ghana in okay. particular. And I, I think it's because this is where our ans- my ancestors that's, that's, were okay. taken Also, from. you were tied to us. You have a connection with us? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Exactly. Well, you feel it. <laughs> I just feel that I feel yes. that that's where it began. Okay. You know, because all the Africans were taken from all over Africa right. to the Cape Coast, okay. and that's where they were taken. Okay. To to the Americas. And you've so. been to Cape Coast. I've been to Cape Coast, okay. but I'm going back again. And you yeah. did a recital in, in I the, did. The, the, in the, the in the Williams Dungeon. It was yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, I really felt a connection there. Okay. Because we went to Elmina. This was on the tour with the Calabash. Right. We went to the Emil- Elmina Castle mm-hmm. the day before. Yeah. I didn't feel anything, and I was thinking, oh, that was because I was expecting to get really <laughs> emotional. The so first time I went there, I nearly cried my eyes out. It Elmina. Was, no, I think Cape Coast. Cape Coast. Because, Coast, because yeah. I felt this overbearing yeah. presence, you know, yeah. and it was a bit unnerving. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. And, and, no, I didn't really you didn't feel, feel anything. anything and I yeah. thought oh that was that wasn't so bad mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and they said wait till we go to Cal- Cape Coast the next day and that's exactly what happened I yeah. really felt it there okay. so I feel that's probably the beginning of my journey and finding okay. where my ancestors were taken all right so how long have you been doing poetry now oh um since 2001 okay yeah 14 years yeah. or oh, entering 14 writing years. and recording because I recorded my first poem mm-hmm. in 2001 amazing as well. Yeah. Amazing. So, um, on top of that, on top of the poetry and the recording, um, I have you your CD, mm-hmm. um, Seas of Love. 
seat. And there's this beautiful, you know, artwork, mm. um, a woman, a, a flower, a rose. Yeah, that was one of the images that came to me in a flash. Mm -hmm. I was when I was started learning to meditate. Okay. In fact, it was in before I started learning to meditate. Yeah. That was kind of my subconscious mind telling me I needed to start learning to meditate. All right. I was I would just get images. Uh huh. And it know. just and it just came out. Yeah. From this nowhere. beautiful woman budding yeah. out of and it, she looks like you though. That's what people say. <laughs> I was copying it from a magazine. But, okay. You know, if they tell me all my paintings. Yeah, she like looks me. like you though. Yeah. You know, you are your own muse. I like that. I like that you're your own inspiration. But so far, so good. You are now a painter. How did that one come about? Oh, yeah. So at school, I was always good at art and mm -hmm. English literature. I was okay. good at writing. Those are my two best subjects at school. But then I kind of didn't do anything with it for like 20 odd years. You Ooh, know, okay. I just left school, started doing accounts. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, it was only when I had my second son. Okay. That I thought. You're a mother of you're a mother of three three sons, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I just I decided I wanted to get back to doing something creative, or I wanted some, to do something that worked around my children as okay. well. Okay, amazing. So I started getting back into the writing and the art. So after twenty years, this is what came out. This I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, going to take a paintings. picture. I'm going to take a picture of this, and, and I'm also going to post a link of your website yeah. onto our Facebook page so people can go check it out. Because if yeah. this is what comes out after twenty years of, I know people thought I'd been painting for years, you know, <laughs> and I hadn't even painted with oils and canvas before. I just went out. I'd gone to this meditation session. There was yeah. about a hundred of us in the room, mm -hmm. and the following day, I don't know what happened that day, but the following day, I went out and bought canvases and started painting. You started painting this, yeah. Right? You made God proud, you know. I've got eleven. Yeah, you, of them. you, yeah. you made God very proud. I love it. I love it. But I have someone who's been so far very quiet. Yeah. You know, yeah. and um, you, you, can you tell us your name? Yeah, my name is Ike Boat. Um, also into poetry. Yeah. yeah. And so, how did you two meet? Actually, um. It's through Facebook, you know, yeah, social yeah, media websites. Ever yeah. ubiquitous Facebook over there. <laughs> yeah. So that is how we came together. Uh -huh. We started communicating on Facebook. Okay. You know, uh, because uh, I realized that she's endowed with such a great gift in terms okay. of poetry. That's and so, statement. Yeah, yeah. We, we connected uh, to this medium and okay. I started even reading more about some of his poems. Okay, yeah. nice, nice. And I know you're also part of the, the uh, number one Takradi Poetry Club. Um, have you been able to introduce her to um, some of the members? Uh, yes, please. I think uh, today I was able to introduce. Yeah, and I'm a one. member. I'm a member. Of, <laughs> yeah, I'm a member. <laughs> so I haven't right. performed yet, and I'm a member. Um, Kujeje <laughs> uh, the anchor of our morning show, Good. is a member. Chelsea, yeah. the lady who brought you in, yes. is a member. So I've met two two members yeah. from the Takaradi Poetry. Yeah, club nice, today. nice. <laughs> All right, so I know you performed during the last um, um, outing, the last recital that was staged on the twentieth. Yes, please. Yeah, you yeah. did a Christmas. Yeah, Christmas, Christmas. is coming. Yeah, Christmas is coming. coming yeah. The man actually wanted to do a whole lot more, but time didn't permit him. All right. So what do you think you're going to take from your encounter with her? She's an amazing woman. Yeah. You know, um, some, I feel like if I walk near her and I breathe the same air with her, I might end up painting Picasso or something, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I've, been, I've been learning a lot since... Um, we met yesterday, you know, we met a, a couple of times. Okay. And so I think he's uh, very creative, mm -hmm. you know, his writing style. Yeah, know, okay. Then also involving visual arts. You All know, right. So it's, it's very good to learn from him. So I think I, I'm tapping a lot more from his style oh, of writing. Suck it dry, you know? man. Because he's <laughs> yeah. going to replenish when she goes back. <laughs> yeah. Suck it dry. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So you have been to Takrade. Let's mm. move away from poetry a little bit. You've been to Takrade. You've been, oh, you know, nice. you've traveled uh, to a few places. Mm. What was the one thing that has stood out for you? The big contrast between the the wealthy Ghanaians and the oh, poor. Oh, you noticed. <laughs> you noticed. You noticed. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you saw the contrast. Oh. And how did it make you feel? Oh, well, I'm still processing, you, you know. Yeah. Because I thought I was going to come in and be writing, 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 and it was like nothing. Mm -hmm. And... I think it's only now I'm starting to get bits and pieces okay. and I will be writing some blogs about it okay, this week. But yeah, I'd, and also the, the, the white Jesus everywhere. Oh, <laughs> oh my I had goodness. to mention it, sorry. Oh, yeah, but, I, I, you know, know, I know, you know. <laughs> I, I, like think, a, I think those are vestigial, you know, leavings of the colonial people we never were able to get rid of. So don't blame us so much. Um, I think we need somebody white skin to focus on to think all, all our problems will go away. You know, when mm. I pray, I don't see a white Jesus. I don't even see a Jesus at all, but some people, that's what they need to do. So, mm. but being in the UK and, and hearing about Africa and actually coming to Africa. Yes, it's been totally different yeah, to what do, I expected. What, what the Western media... I tell you how, what, what yeah, yeah. most struck me mm -hmm. is 
I thought I was going to come here and ex get some culture. Okay. And, you know. Uh, ouch. Roots. Yeah, we've been too westernized. <laughs> I, 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 how wouldn't we be in? Okay. And it's like, where is it? Yeah. My friend's telling me I have to go north, you know, to get a bit of culture. Yeah, unfortunately. You know? we, we've assimilated way too much. That's mm. the problem. Yeah. We have assimilated way too much. But it's still there. You know, mm. you know, um, no matter what you do, you leave your house dressed like you're Beyonce or you're Rihanna, risque mm. and everything out there. When you come home at the end of the day, you're still going to, you know, your father is probably going to tell you like, do this, you know, cook from the pot or cook from the coal pot. Or even if you're cooking from a stove, you're cooking the natural Ghanaian local dish mm. so we still have our culture and then um even in church we still have some of the songs that we sing um the textiles that we wear mm. but the unfortunate thing is we've just chucked a whole lot of it outside chucked what outside our culture we've thrown a oh. lot of it out and it's sad i mean for someone like me who's mm. you know the descendant of an enslaved african and yeah. trying to come back and reconnect with your roots yeah and seeing that all come the, back and mm -hmm. there's not really nightclubs here and, you know you know, you know um, <laughs> Kentucky Fried Chicken and all that. <laughs> you know? and, but, it, it's been amazing. It's been amazing. But let me ask you a question. If you go here, if you move from Takradi from Accra and you go back and you're sitting down in your small room and you're meditating, trying to process all that you've seen here, how is that going to reflect in your next body of work? That's going to be interesting because I can't even answer that question right oh, you, now. You should, try. You, should, you should try to give me a little bit of something. <laughs> <laughs> Would it be positive though? Um... Yeah, I because we have a lot. Many be. times we have a lot of problems with people who are usually and forgive me for using this word, very myopic. Mm. You yeah. know, they come here with pre-programmed yeah. ideas, yeah. and then when they come and they witness it, yeah. and then that is all that they take away with them. And um, you are, like you said, a, a, a descendant of yeah. Africa. Um, you've seen the wealthy and you've seen the very abject poor mm. and you've seen people who've taken on american and western you know lifestyles and totally neglected their culture oh, but then the culture, yeah. you've actually had a chance to see the culture in play you've been to the art center you've been yeah, to that's right. and you've seen the people yeah you know so how is that going to reflect is that going to impact on it positively that's well i tough. came here to do research for mm -hmm. the sequel to my novel mm -hmm. and um I I guess yeah I guess at some because point. I need I need to get that out you of you to... <laughs> before you go you know so that I won't throw you on the internet and, and post threatening messages to you. I need to get that <laughs> uh, I guess I better say yes then no, you have to you have to <laughs> oh, but but you know I love it I love I love the fact that even when you write and it is negative i don't expect you to be so scared that you have to write it you know say positive i, I expect you to be true to yourself that mm. like you're going to write what you saw mm. but naturally it's going to reflect the truth is always the truth mm. you know and i, I expect to see but that but i always look at like i look at the situation and i think what can be done to make it better how you know but is there anything that i can even do Excellent. because it's the people that are you know, Good. in control of exactly. the finances, is the, you know, that's that's where the problem is. Okay. okay. You know, like we went to, saw the rig, the rig, the oil rig. Yes, you went there. Yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I'd watched a video about the oil okay. in, in Ghana yeah. at my friend's house in Pakwasi. Mm -hmm. And even yesterday, Bob from uh, Melody the, was yeah. saying how 90%, mm -hmm. I mean, we have the oil yeah. and these people come and they see that we've got oil mm -hmm. and then they... Say well, you can't get the oil, so we have to bring we, in our people. We, yeah, yeah, our then equipment. Then we can set, set everything up and get the oil. We'll give we'll give you ten percent and take ninety percent. Really. Now, why didn't they agree to a better mm. term than that? Exactly. Or like for the next three years, yes, they can get ninety percent, but, but then, then we after move on that, to a different deal. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. That is the thing that happens, unfortunately. Yeah. But you know. So long as there is life, there is open. So long as there are people like you and there's people like my men here who would tap with people like you, you know, mm -hmm. there is open. And I'm glad that you are not like CNN or BBC. They want to report. They don't want to influence, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the news okay. and what is happening. That's good. But a time is up. Mm. It's been a, it's been a blast. What what do you have to tell us? Just, just give me something. Um, Can you compose one on the spur of the moment? I've never no I'm not really a freestyler you're not a freestyler <laughs> oh, come Ike, on Ike is aren't I, aren't uh, I he would have his turn but I okay all right can you can you tap into the recesses of your of your of your storage and give us something um 
Mm-hmm. It recesses of my storage. Mm-hmm. This is a story of mm-hmm. about my inner child. Because okay. like I said, I was a blocked writer and artist for over 20 years. Yeah. The, the poem that I wrote explained how I unblocked as an artist. Okay. And mm-hmm. Basically, it was by t- tapping into my inner child. Okay. So it's, um, Shazan, okay. my artist, is a child. I call to her and she answers me with a poem, a dance and a... Squiggle, did he? She loves to be free, my artist. Free to explore her creativity with no limitations or boundaries. So what's stopping her? Me. Yes, me, the adult, constrained in what I can see, stuck in my blocks and adult mentality. You can't do that, I scold as she tries to break free. I want to paint, she says. No! I reply, frightened of what she may tell of me as she paints away freely. I want to write, she cries. No, no, I squeal at the thought of my thoughts on paper, she may reveal. I want to dance, she pleads. No, 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 my senses scream. At your age, start to prance. Please, can I sing, she begs. She wants to paint, she wants to write, she wants to dance, she wants to sing. How can I deny my artist child these things? How can I refuse her the right to be free to express her creativity? So, I give her the paints and the time of day. I give her the dance classes she's always craved. I allow her to write when her spirit takes and to sing. Yes, to sing with the voice that God gave. I take her out on our artist's date and feed her images for her to relate back to her play, play, work day. Now, my child, go and create. Thank you. Ah, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I have goose pimples. I have goosebumps. I have goosebumps. That's amazing. And we have that recorded. Yes, we have oh, that recorded. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to put that on CD and sell it when you're out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that is amazing. That is amazing. That is amazing. And Ike, yeah. is it, do you have a line or two you could give us? Yeah, um, this piece is actually a minerals of the nation. You know, Ghana is uh, having lots of minerals. So okay. this piece is... Uh, minerals of this nation the title uh, okay a nation of unique location it is the home of many built on consistent population we can find the mahogany it is made up of diverse regions place of different gifts and talent some can't cope with the religions so they come and buy with scent the forest is full of timber that's why some call it their own because they live to remember even when they are not grown. How about the lands of bauxite? It makes some import machines so as to operate on the site. Can there be possibility without engines? Indeed, some have seen their gold, diamond. Therefore, they call businessmen abroad. The other time, it was the turn of Richmond who made them import and of course export that load. Those are the community depend on the manganese in order to sustain their livelihood. They never hesitate to contact the Chinese. This brings them to their neighborhood. The enormous vegetation of cocoa makes the farmers so popular. When the factory want to make rich cocoa, it's always not similar. The most profitable is the gold, which many engage in the mining some struggle when the weather is cold they don't think about losing in the aircraft there is discovery of oil this needs proper economic management so the larger equipment are good to dig the soil indeed to bring about development the comprehensive study is based on geography which introduced some to the factors of geology some identify the minerals of the nation in photography it's also good to know about the nation's ecology. Yeah, that is a piece. You know, you know what? Don't ever read this near a government official. <laughs> <laughs> Never ever read this near a government official. All right, because I tell you, man, tell it, oh, man. 
you know you're leaving me feeling very 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 um touched and unfortunately very out out done i'll play because i don't have any to give you <laughs> you know because i'm in the same portrait club with this gentleman here but i don't have any but i am so privileged to have the two of you here what we're going to do is once we get out you know we're going to play a couple of your recitals you know to let the i love it i love it i love it and you guys have made the show such a wonderful blast um have you learned any Ghanaian words any tidy words have you taught her anything we haven't spent enough time together. Oh, come <laughs> on, man. Are you serious? <laughs> I, I know Medasse. Oh, thank you. Etienne. 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 Etienne is somewhere in France. <laughs> all, right, so, <laughs> all right, so thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, as well. Um, all right, Bye so uh, Suzanne, thank, oh, you, so thank you so much for all having right. us. It's a beautiful, beautiful affair. So we're just going to go for a song from the man Ed Sheeran. Remember, you're listening to the Paragon Mello here on 99.9, the urban radio experience for the mature mind. We had the lady... Please call her your name. I love the way you mention it. Shazan Poetess. Shazan Poetess. She is an artist. She is a singer. She is a poet. She travels. She's going to learn dancing. She's going to learn drumming. And she went on the Kakum plank and she was very scared. She has three beautiful sons. And she's amazing. So go to her website. I'm going to put... Well, she writes books as well. She writes books and she releases CDs. And we have we didn't even mention the Billboard Award that you won. Oh yes, yes. yeah. So I'm um, looking forward to going and collecting my award, yeah. spoken word, book okay. Billboard Awards. And okay. I really think that's just from having my poetry online for people to go and listen to. Amazing. So yeah, amazing. I'm looking forward to going to America and mm-hmm. touring. I'm planning on touring. America. Yeah, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. And check out her website. It's shazanpoetess.com. That's all there is to it. Just check it out and. I'll post the link to our Facebook and our WhatsApp line so that you can just follow it and then check her out. She's awesome. And then if you're interested in Takradi poetry, you mm. can also just, you know, look for me and then I'll tell you where it's at. You can find it. So we're going to go for Ed Sheeran. And then the next time you hear anything, is going to be one of her pieces here on the Prago Mellow 99.9. God bless you all and celebrate your talent. Mm. When your legs don't work like they used to before, And I can't sweep you off of your feet 